Okay, to get started, um, on the Teach Me to Color group, we have our test files under this right here. You'll see discussion, members, events, photos, and files. If you go under files, you're going to see a lot, a lot of things right here. Go all the way to the bottom. These are all of our files. If you want to look at some of the files before you pick out which one you want to actually color, just click on one. You can go to preview. And you can see the picture there. And this one is actually I'm trying to find a certain one, but this one will actually work. So we're going to push download. And then you can actually go to show in folder. If you're unsure where it saves to, it'll show you the folder's name and where the file is actually located here and actually will highlight the photo. So, with that being said, we're going to go over to PicMonkey. You go to Touch Up. And this shows you where you want to pull your photo from. You can pull from Dropbox, OneDrive, from your Facebook. Or even from your computer. So we're going to go to computer. And mine is actually all the way at the bottom. I've actually got a lot of photos. So I know it's going to be down here at the bottom somewhere. And there it is. So I'll highlight that. I'm going to push open. And this is going to bring the photo up in PicMonkey. Your color choices are really going to be your own. Um, there's several ways to color this, just like there is with any program. There's several ways to go about doing the same thing. Um, I'm going to scroll all the way down. As you see, it's on this little lipstick tool here. I haven't changed it. I'm going to scroll all the way down. And I'm going to pick highlights. And I'm going to go ahead and pick a, a color. What I'm looking for is maybe a color for this. And I think maybe a green or a blue would be really pretty here. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to pick a green, a little bit darker green, maybe like this. And I can even adjust my brush size here, make it bigger, smaller. And it'll actually show you how big it's going to be, or how small it's going to be as you adjust your, your marker here. This is going to adjust the intensity of the color. Lighter on this end, it's going to be a lighter color. This way, it's going to be the full color spectrum. So, go in and color this. And this one's not going to be real perfect. Like I said, I'm just basically showing you how to get to the files, how to start coloring, do different things. The, my other videos kind of go into a more in-depth look of how to do this, how to do different functions, and different techniques using PicMonkey. And there you go. Getting this colored. As you can see, we can still kind of see this behind there, so I want to get that because that's not really her hair is this. And say I got all of this colored like this, and then I decided I really didn't like the green, and I wanted to go instead to blue. The wonderful thing about Pink Monkey is even though it's all colored, I can actually change the color now. I'm going to pull this slider all the way up so I get my color spectrum again. And I can actually scroll to, through the different spectrums here to see which ones I like best. See how pretty that is. All right, and I actually missed a spot here. As I go through, I realized that I missed a spot. If I can go back in. When I'm happy with how this looks and that I've got everything, you really need to. Something I push a lot is you really need to kind of zoom in. You can pull this box around to see. You see how I missed a spot here. It helps you to get those tight areas to make sure that you're getting everything colored the way that it should be.
and there's actually some there. So I'm going to take my brush size down some. I'm actually going to just kind of go in and get like that, and that's going to help it blend a little better. And I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to go ahead and push apply. Now, once I push apply, the only way to undo this is going to go up, be up, up here. We're going to go up here, and it's going to undo the last action. All right. And let's do hair. I also, you can use the highlights here and pick these different hair colors. This is the brown, darker brown, lighter brown, black. And blonde. These are always already selected for you. See if I go in and start coloring, see how it looks blonde. I can change it to the brown or even the black. So I kind of like her. Maybe it's that. It's a dark brown. So we're going to go ahead and color her hair. Adjust my brush size some and go down. And say I did, sometimes it'll drag and you'll get like a mark like that. In order to do that, go ahead and push the erase tool here. And you can actually make it a little bigger. It usually helps me to make it a little bigger to make sure you get it all. And we're going to go back and erase that. And I think I've got a little bit right here. All right. Now, once you're happy again with how this looks, you're going to just push apply. I'm going to actually show you a little bit something a little bit different. I'm going to go in and put some highlights in. So I'm going to push the blonde tool. Take this down a little bit. And because you can tell it her hair is kind of lighter here. Which kind of like a highlight. In some of these little areas here. I don't want it to be all that blended color, but I do want to bring out these lighted places. So I'm going to do this, and then I'm actually going to fade it down a little bit so that it blends a little better and you don't see the edges of that color. Like this, and then I'll go ahead and push apply again. So the next thing we're going to do is skin color. There are several, several different ways, again, to do this. Like I said, I covered this in a lot of the videos. Um, what I find that works best for me, there's actually one up here that says spray can. You can click that and it's going to give you this. You can adjust the darkness. You can adjust the intensity and your breath size. And again, it gives you the erasure tool. But for me, I find out it looks more realistic. If I actually go here to the eyebrow pencil and use this orange, And I'm gonna I'm actually gonna zoom in a little bit so this I can see this a little better. And I usually go ahead and take it all the all the way up on the fade some so that I can really see where, where this is getting. It really helps to do this. And my brush is a little bit too big. So I want to get in these tight little areas here.
All right, and then once you get it kind of all done like this, I'm just gonna look a little easier this way. I'd go in and clean up these edges some because you can see where I've gotten to the hair and it's making it a lot darker. But for just this little video, I'm not going to do that. Cause, like I said, this is just to show you how basically to get this done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the fade down some. And see how it's real orange and it's going to go down. And I kind of like it about there. So I'm going to post leave it there. I'm going to post apply. And then to give it a more realistic look, because nobody's skin color is really all the same color, I really like to use this twice tool. Here, and I, and I stick with this color here because it kind of just gives it a really lively look. And you can adjust the fade on it as well. And it usually helps to take it all the way up so that you can kind of see where you got. You're going to do different shades or going to give you different tones. If you hit this white here, it's actually going to give you brown colors instead of pink. So that you can kind of you can kind of play with it and see what you like best. But usually this is what I like best. This one's a little bit different because it's got so many freckles and everything. But I'm going to use this. Kind of just give her a little. It keeps it from being too pink generally. You just use the blush tool on Pink Monkey. And make sure you get all over those areas again. And what the blush tool is also good for. When you have pictures that are so white they will not take color, it will take this blush. You can actually go here and pick the color you need. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. It's just it's not going to be this pronounced once you fade it in some. I just really wanted it like that so that I could see where it was going. So About like that. Clean her eyes up some. And that gives her a very realistic skin tone. All right, so next what we're going to do is I'm actually going to add some blush to her. And I want to use a little redder blush, though, so you can see it. Um, usually this is about the right size. I'm going through this. Like I said, it's always very important to kind of fade that blush in. You don't want it standing out. You don't want to be just able to see the edges. Clean this edge up a little bit here. And then we're going to push apply. All right, the next thing we're going to do is look at the lip colors. You can do this two ways. I personally will go down and I will pick a color that I like in the highlight and do it this way. But for tutorial sake, I'm going to teach you how to do it using the, the lip tint tool. So the lip tip tool you can go through and you can pick a variety of colors. It's going to change. You can change the tone, the intensity, how hard it is. But I think, you know, it's really going to depend on, on what works best for you. And that's a lot of what Pick Monkey is, is what's, what's working for you the best. So I'm going to take my brush size down some. And again, I'm going to zoom in some more. Almost to where it lines up. And then I'll show you the different features here. So I'm going to color her lips. Get those outer edges. Okay, I'm going to zoom out because it kind of gives you a little more realistic outlook on how it looks. And you can change the tone by moving the slider either way. It's going to make it a little darker. 
the lighter. I don't really like the lighters. They usually look very fake. But somewhere usually right in the middle, like that there, looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to push apply. I'm just going to go in right quick. Just so the whole picture is colored, I'm going to do like a green back here. Like she's standing in front of some trees. I'm going to put some green in these edges. Okay. Just so that it looks like it's all colored. And we can again take the intensity up or down and do it about right there. All right, and we're going to go in and do her eyes now. So we're going to zoom in really close. Again, there's several ways to do this. Um, there's an eye tint tool here, but I find that the eye colors just they don't look very realistic to me. I would rather pick my colors and go through that way. The eye colors just seem to look very bright or brilliant. And it's just something that I prefer not to do. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to actually do her with some green eyes maybe. So, or a hazel color eyes, which is like a greenish brown. So um, the best thing to do for me is to go ahead and get my brown. I'm going to make it not too brown. Maybe about like there. Maybe a little lighter. Okay, I'm going to take my brush size now. I'm actually going to zoom in some more. And I think Pigmonkey will zoom in like up to 800. And I see this ring that's on this outer, or this inner pupil here. I'm actually going to go around it. Give kind of a brownish color. And maybe do this a little bit. But you know, your eyes, yeah, sometimes they have those little marks in them where they come in a little further, go out a little further. Okay, and I'm going to push apply. Well, actually, I'm going to take it off so you can see. About there. And I like that, so I'm going to push apply. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some green over it. And I want a dark green, but I'm actually going to fade it out some so that it's not as brilliant. So I'm going to take the brush size down again. And I'm literally just going to go right on top of that. It's going to make that brown a little bit deeper. And Let's again zoom out. And it gives her eyes a very realistic look. And you can adjust the greens to give her a little bit brighter look. I, I kind of like it coming down here. Mm -hmm. Very realistic. I'm going to go ahead and push apply. <clears throat> All right. So now I'm going to zoom in. And then we're going to focus on that water line. The best way I was told to do this is pick a color like in between a pink and a purple. Kind of about like there. And then we're going to take our brush size down. Because you kind of want to match this line here. Okay. And then you're going to just color on this line. So that's the water line. So you want to do what you can see. Sometimes it kind of goes in where you can't see it anymore. Like there. And then the, the edge of this eye is always going to have that color in it. I actually ended up going over it a little bit right here. But it does have that same color. So then we're going to go here, and this is just going to help their eyes look a little more realistic. You can adjust how how bright or dark that tint is with the fade to make it blend a little better, because you don't want it just standing out. It's just a little bit different color shade. So we're going to zoom back out, and that actually blends very good with the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and push apply. But look, I'm going to fade it in and out so you can kind of see. You want it just to have a tinge of color. So we're going to push apply there. And then there's several other features that you can use. I, I, th I think it looks good, so I'm not really going to mess with it a whole lot more. Um, one of the features that you can use um, is doing things like eyeshadow, um, which is like right here. You can pick some different colors. There's actually, you know, some different shades. 
I'll go in and do some right quick just to show you. I wouldn't normally do this because I, I just don't think a lot of times they need it. But on occasion, and it doesn't give you a really lot, a lot of color choices. You can pick more color choices if you use the blush and pick your color. But you can do it like this, fade it in, fade it out, pick that color. You know, we don't want anything that bright. But for some reason, you may need it that bright. So we're going to go like this. We're going to push across. <clears throat> then I'm going to show you a few little tricks here that someone showed me. Using the mascara tool, you can actually go over things and kind of make those eyes stand out a little bit, make the lips stand out. I'm Usually, it depends on the picture. Some of them, it's not going to look good doing the whole thing. But see how if I go over this her scarf here, it's going to bring that pattern out. So that it gives it more like a 3D look. Even her hair, I can go over it, and it's going to give it a little more 3D look. Her nose, all that. It just kind of brings her out a little bit. So, And you can adjust the strength of how strong or how lightly it does that. I kind of like it about there. So I'm going to push apply. And honestly, your picture is done here. But there's also features underneath this magic wand here. You'll see it here. You can push this. And mine's not going to pull up now because I said that. There it goes. Okay. There are several features here. You can kind of play with them. Um, cross process. It'll show you that. Um, you can reverse effect where it only works on certain parts of the picture and you color those in. Um, but just because you look at them, it's not going to apply them. You can always push cancel and back out. I kind of like the Orton tool. kind of smooths everything out. You see how that looks? You can adjust the brightness up or down to where you kind of like it. When you get to the darkness, when you adjust the brightness down some, what you're going to look at, though, is you see how dark her blush looks now? Her eyeshadow, even her lipstick look very dark. So I'm going to keep it somewhere right there in the middle. And her, her blush is actually a little darker than what I like. And I can actually fade it out some. But it makes it give it kind of a smooth overall look. This will not work well on all pictures. But for the most part, it does work pretty good. It kind of just blends everything out. So we're going to push apply. Okay, you can actually go down here and give it a frame if you like. It's got different types of frames for you to choose from. You know, and you can adjust the thickness. Things like this. It's just You really want to just play with these and kind of see what you like. Push apply. You can add some text. Um, and just do different features. And I go over some of these different features, like I said, in other videos. Alright, so since we're done, we're going to push save. And my computer is being extremely slow today. Probably because I'm not at home. But we're going to push save. We'll get there eventually. Okay, it's going to give you three options for saving. It's going to get you one that says Roger, which is a very low quality photo. We'll go ahead and push that and you can see. It says it's not a great quality, but it's a tiny file size. Then you have Pierce that's a medium quality, or great quality and a good file size. And then you have a Sean that's a gorgeous but larger file size. We're going to actually save this as a Pierce because I like to keep it in the middle. Now, if I'm using it for something else, then I would go in and use it as a Sean. Like if I'm doing it for like um, teach, or teach Me to Color, I would keep it right in the middle. So like color eyes and things where other people are going to reuse, reuse these photos, I keep it a little bigger. It really doesn't matter because Facebook adjusts it to the size that it's going to want it to be anyways. But I'm going to push save. You see this little dancing monkey here. And he's saving your picture. <clears throat> and it might be a good idea to save in some stages. In case you need to make some changes or stuff. But there are ways to go about doing that without having to save it in stages if you want. You really need to do a video on that as well. Alright, and we're going to push save. 
and I'm going to push them out. I'm going to put it in a different folder. And the reason it is is because, like, on colorize and things like that, I like to have my before image and my after image. If you save in the same folder, that will not happen. So I'm actually going to save in my file that, folder that says colors. And these are usually my colored images or my edited images that I've done. So I'm going to push save. And I've already got one because I've already colored this picture. So we're going to do save one. And it'll say masterpiece saved. And this is how you color a picture. This is how you get started using both Teach Me to Color and Pick My Key. So thank you for watching my video. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.